So in one of my last videos, I talked about how an array was a data structure that can store more than one element of data within an assigned variable name. So in this example, for example, where we have fruit, um, I can store more than one item in, uh, in this data structure. So another thing we could do is we could also have uh, an array within an array. So, you know, which is what we call a 2D array. So in this example, I'm going to edit this slightly so that I'm going to have, I'm going to create another, whoops, let's create an array. And then let's put this array inside it like this. And then within that, let's create one more. So we'll create another one for vegetables as well. So we'll call this carrots and we'll add lettuce. Uh, it should be in quotes and let's also add cucumber cucumber and let's go one further let's add one for people with a sweet teeth people like me ice cream ice cream and baklava okay so now, as you can see, what I have is I've got um, uh, square brackets here and the opening brackets here and the closing brackets here. So this is my outer array. And within that, I've got three separate items. So item one, item two, and item three. And within these items, so within these items, there are more items. So let's change the name of this as well. Let's call it food instead, because it's not just fruit anymore. Oops. Okay, so when I display that, it does display it all on one line. Um, and I can I can see that I've got my other arrays inside. So I can see there's my outer array here. And I can see item one, item two, up to there, and then item three. But what I want is I want them to display each on a separate line. So I'm going to say four. Um, for line in food, let us print line. So now it should print each inner array on its own line, which is fine. That's perfect. And now what we can do is we can we can do some of the functions that we did previously to um, append items within each separate array or to um, remove items and to reassign items. So let's start by adding an item. So I'm going to say, let's say food um, and I'll say to food. So on the first line, let's dot append and let's add mango. And then let's copy that. So we print each line out again and let's create this line of space between each one so now when we run it that's good we can see that using that line there so on the first to the first item so that means to this first list we've appended mango here okay so now let's also uh, remove an item so let's say food and let's do this to the second item. So our second list would be our vegetables. And then we'll say pop. And let's pop out cucumber. Let's get rid of that. So that'll be item two. So if I run it again now, well, what should happen is um, cucumber should disappear from this array. And that's worked as well. Brilliant. So the last thing that we were going to do then was we was going to reassign an item. So let's say food. And let's reassign apple. So let's say food item zero. So the first list and the first item within that list, we're going to say, let's do strawberry. So now when we run that, apple here should change the strawberry. And that worked as well. Okay. So that just leaves us with one other thing really to demonstrate is that if we want to, we can we could just display one item 
in the array as well so I mean this kind of gives it away anyway but let's say if I just wanted to print one item not the whole thing so let's say let's print let's display um, food and let's do item zero so from the fruit let's display pear so that should just display just the one item and that's done that as well okay so interestingly there are some really good use cases for this so what I've done here is I've created a, a simple board and I've scaled it down so imagine this was like a chess board um, because this is you know one great use case for something like 2d arrays is being able to um, create a board for a game like noughts and crosses chess battleships or something like that so let's imagine that this is a board that we have um, so this is row one row two row three and what I've done is I've populated each one with just one space a blank space in each one so if I was to display that on the screen right now let's run that it gives me a simple board and obviously what I'm missing is lines in it and you know I haven't got like a, a checkered background but that's fine this is just for example um, and then what I've got here is I've got a Unicode I've got a Unicode character for Rook a chess piece and I want to place that on the board so let's display the board as it is and underneath that let's say that board and let's say board row 2 so it will be the bottom row and the middle middle column equals rook so I've got my I've got my string item here which is my rook and I'm just going to assign that to that so now if I do the same thing let's display that one more time let's take that there and let's display it so what I should get and again what I should really do is let's do this just so that we've got a space between the first um, print and the second display of, a, of the table there we are so as you can see here now I've got a rook in the middle and let's say for example then what I wanted to do was I wanted to remove it from there and I wanted to move it to the top here top row middle column so what I'm gonna do here let's minimize it let's hide that for a second um, so here I'm gonna say board two so row two column one I want to reassign that to a space and then what I want to do is um, as you may have noticed at the top here I've imported sleep because I just want like a, a second um, between this happening so I'm gonna say um, let's display the board again oh, in fact, no what we'll say is we'll assign on the first row oh gosh choose my changes disconnect here so on this on the first row here I want that rook to move to this column so I'm gonna say let's move that to item one no actually I can see I've made a mistake there that should be one so I'll put the rook there and then what we'll do is we'll display the board again so let's borrow that um, in fact what I might do it might make it better if I was to clear the screen as well so let's say um, ooh, I believe the way to do that is no, it's OS dot system and clear and let's do one more thing let's remove that initial display so just to clarify what's going on let's have a look at this line by line so um, these are my imports ignore my imports for now for one is just so I can clear the screen so I've imported um, the OS for that um, and here you'll see in a second what I mean by clear so after waiting a second it will clear the screen and it will display the new version of the board um, here I've imported sleep so that I can have um, a second between displaying the board the first time and the second time here I explain that this is my Unicode character for the Rook which you can see here um, the board itself is blank so I'm going to minimize that and then on this line we assign the Rook to the bottom row and the middle column and then we displayed 
the board itself. And now on this line, line 15, I have removed the rook from the bottom here. Um, I've waited a second. I've assigned the rook to the top instead. So in this top middle column, I've cleared the screen so that the initial display will disappear with the rook at the bottom. And then I've displayed the board again. So let's see what happens when we run that. Yeah, so as you can see, it's gone from the bottom here to the top. Let's do that one more time. Brilliant. So it's just an example use case. This is not the best way to do it. Obviously, it's just an example.